Today's objective is to create a simple event-driven program by creating user interface elements. So today you'll learn how to add event handlers, code that listens for and responds to user events. You'll also explore some common errors that come up in event-driven programming, and we'll learn some important skills for debugging programs, chief among them before responding to error messages. Most modern applications are interactive, that is, responding to users who click buttons or type in a text box, they tilt their screens, they swipe between screens, etc. In every instance, the user's action is generating some kind of event and the program responds by running an associated block of code. Programming a modern application is therefore typically an exercise in creating a user interface and then defining what will happen when the user interacts with that interface. The event-driven mindset of programming can take a little getting used to. Often when learning, you write sequential programs that run from start to the end or to some point when the program terminates. Your think right share here is what does an event handler do? In an event-driven program, your code must always be at the ready to respond to user events, like clicking a button. That may happen at any time or not at all. More complex event-driven programs require interplay and coordination between so-called event handlers, which are functions the programmer writes, but are triggered by the system in response to certain events. Certain high-level programming languages and environments are designed to make certain tasks easier for a programmer. Being able to design the user interface for an app, using a drag-and-drop editor makes designing a stylish product much faster and easier. Your think right share here is what is an event handler. Notice the difference between what it does and what it is. Likely events that will happen when a person's using an app of yours include clicking a button, swiping a screen, dragging your finger, tilting a phone, pressing a key. Modern apps are interactive because they can respond to this and other forms of user input, that is human-generated events. Your think right share is what apps do you have on your phone that do each of these? And describe in detail, please. Be specific of the app you're referring to. So, for example, when I open my email app, I have to click a button that says send to send my email. And we all know that it's not an actual button. It is a box made by pixels to look like a button. Don't worry about getting into detail like that. So before moving any further, I just want to do some vocabulary clarity here. Uh, user interface, also known as UI, is a reference to how a person, that is the user, interacts with a computer or an app. UI elements are objects like buttons, images, text boxes. There's UI events. These are controls like clicking or scrolling or moving a mouse. Then you have an event-driven program, which is designed to run blocks of code or functions in response to a specific event. Then you have event handling. This is an overarching term for coding tasks involved in making your app respond to the events triggered by the functions. Then you have an event listener. So this is a command that can be set up to trigger a function. You'll have a callback function, which is an interesting one. A callback function is a function specified as part of an event listener. So it is written by the programmer, but called by the system as the result of an event triggered. Okay, so apps have elements on the screen that you can interact with. Apps respond to these events in a variety of ways. You want to be on the lookout for types of events we can program, like mouse clicks or movements and, and typing keys on the keyboard or a combination of screen elements that you could perform actions like a combination of buttons, menus, text fields, etc. Okay, so if you want a trippy experience here, you can watch a video of me walking you through a video on the App Lab. Otherwise, feel free to just jump in and start experimenting on your own using this link here. For your task, though, you need to add a large red button to your app using the, the design mode. You're going to drag a button onto the app screen, change the text to say, click me, and then make the color of the button red. So really three steps, quite easy. And then you'll paste your code on a canvas. So just real quick, this is where you should be at. And this is the code that you'll be fixing up and then pasting onto canvas. So for you visual learners, here's that same reminder. Don't forget to paste your code. Okay, so a callback function is a little tricky. It's only different from a normal function in that you don't call it directly from the code. Instead, a callback function is called by the system at the time the specified event occurs. So callback functions are a common pattern in a lot of event-driven programming. 
So right here is a great example of what I'm talking about. You'll have this keyword that says on event. So when a UI element called button, maybe it says start, right? So button one, when it is clicked, the computer knows to go ahead and begin this function. And what does this function, though it's small right here, say to do? It says to move forward by 25 pixels. So with that said, I want you to create an original block of code that looks something like this. On event, let's say you have a UI element called click me. When it is clicked, the function will begin running. So any function you would like to invent again, go ahead and do so. Your think right share, I want you to name the button whatever you want, something original, and then type out the code and paste it into Canvas under this think right share. So, so far, we have two blocks of code. This is what you'll see. You'll either see camel case, underscores, or dashes. Now, my preference is camel case, but this is a part of the creativity and programming You'll have the freedom to use whichever one you'd like, and then of course you'll want to take your coworkers into consideration, um, especially if you guys are working on the same files of code. For the purpose of consistency, I'm sure you'll all need to decide on what the preference will be at that time. So here's your typical pattern for creating apps. You'll have the design mode where you add the elements. Once you have the elements, you're going to add events to the code. So set the ID and event type to listen for some event of that element. And then the third step is to write the code for the event handling function. And the code describes what you want the app to do when the specified type of event happens on the specified ID. So when I push start, I want to go to the start screen. Or when I push cancel, I want the text to be erased from the text box. And the last step is a funky one because it's multiple steps where you'll run the program, thus testing the code, looking for parts of the code that are not doing what you want, and then debugging, and then doing it all over again and again and again. So if the program doesn't work at first, this is very common, and you just want to try, try again. Think right here. Which one of these steps do you enjoy doing the most? Not surprisingly, large companies or large projects will break these steps into entire departments. We haven't had a ton of practice with debugging yet, but if you have ever written any code and it threw an error, or it didn't work for any reason, and you had to dig in to figure out what that reason was and fix it, you are essentially debugging. I remember personally working with very many of you in the class, that is, on your first function. After we ran it and it didn't do what you wanted with whatever picture you're trying to create, we had to fix it up, and that fixing it up is called debugging. So a really short think right share here. Did you have to debug after coding today? Was there any opportunity for you to debug? And on a personal level, I did, even when creating this lesson and experimenting with things that you're going to be experimenting with, I forgot these last three characters, and so thus my app was not doing what I wanted. So it's a little things like this that often get uh, programmers to lose sleep or work for hours at a time reading code uh, just to find, even though there are programs out there or text editors that help you find such errors. So even for professionals, it's very common to go through several cycles of run, test, debug uh, to get it right, even for very small programs or pieces of code. It's the nature of the business. Programming and debugging is like getting dressed up to go out. You put on some clothes that you think will look good, but when you have to look in the mirror and make some adjustments and decisions, maybe even realize you need to go a different direction entirely, you are debugging. And just like in coding, some people are better at debugging than others. My think right share here is describe the cycle every coder goes through. Now, writing a program is initially like throwing on some clothes and running the program is like looking in the mirror for the first time. You do it to see what it looks like, knowing that you're going to make some adjustments. But looking in the mirror frequently to see what everything looks like together actually speeds up the process. So getting ready to go out, putting on makeup, or combing your hair without looking in the mirror would not only slow things down, it's foolish. With that in mind, think right share, what speeds up the process of writing programs? And with that, that's the end of the lesson. So think about the lesson, pick an IAB attribute to associate with the content of the day. And here's your DOL. You're going to add an image and make a chaser game, or at least start the creation of a chaser game. Your little game should have text on the top of the screen with a title or instructions for what to do. 
Now, an image that runs away, that is to move randomly based on the mouse event. And your hint here is the easy way to do this is to simply change the IDs in on event and set position to respond to the image instead of the button. However you want to do it though, I'm curious to see what you got. So if you need this link again, here it is. And I look forward to seeing your work.